What's up, family? If it's your first time checking out the show, let me know what city, what state you're coming in from. If you're outside of the U.S., let me know what country you're representing. Family, I need you to smash up the likes, smash up the likes, smash up the likes. Also, if you have not done so already on YouTube, after you subscribe, there's a little bell next to your subscribe button. Go ahead and click that thing right now so you can get your notifications each time I drop a new video like this. That way you'll be in the loop. Make sure after you select your notifications, you select all notifications. Hit that drop button and select all notifications. Otherwise, you may not get any. I let a few hundred of y'all come in and then I'm going in. I'm talking about going all the way in. No pun intended. But first, I am going to give a few shout outs to the early birds. What's up, KK? What it do? Vanessa Johnson is in the building. I see Memphis checking in. Enrico, what's up, Enrico? B. Wick 38, Miami, Florida. Miss Jazzy is in the building. What's up, Dub 2? With Letter White in the building. Let's see. I think I'm going to change that Dub 2 to Double Dub. I think I like Double Dub better with letters. That's your nickname. Double Dub. What up? Let's see. Uh, Benjamin Elam. What's up, Columbus? Columbus in the building. Carisha is in the building. Quentin, Quentin Reed is in here. Uh, Greensboro, North Carolina checking in. We got Robert Joyner and Compton. Compton is checking in. Naomi Washington. Naomi Washington is checking in from Compton. Fam, I'm going to go in. Let's go in. Let's go in. So let me put a pick up of T.D. Jakes here. This is T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes has been under a lot of scrutiny lately. A whole lot of scrutiny. But he has come out and unequivocally denied the false claims against him. What are these claims? Well, these are claims that happened after his name was dragged into recent allegations involving Sean Diddy Combs. A spokesperson for T.D. Jakes has called the claims that have been circulating on social media unequivocally false and baseless. Unequivocally false and baseless. But that's not it, fam. Today, T.D. Jakes answered some questions on his own, but he didn't answer like we may have wanted him to answer, but he did go in. He took a swing at the people who have been punching him around over the last several days. Rumors have circulated about the women thou art loosed author. These are rumors that began circulating on Monday, December 18th, when a video surfaced produced by a person titled Tough News TV implying that T.D. Jakes had been involved in various events hosted by Diddy, engaging in same gender relationships and allegedly participating in inappropriate sexual conduct with a minor. The video claimed that the federal government ascertained evidence from Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, who settled a lawsuit allegedly for tens of millions of dollars after accusing Diddy of abusing her during their relationship that lasted nearly a decade. This claim has not been validated. Various social media influencers like TikTok user Usneezy, I think that you need, uh, just, the just Nini? Just Nini, I think whose clip on the subject received a close to 2 million views, have shared the video despite not having proof 
that the content is true. The clip went viral and within minutes, T.D. Jakes began trending all over social media. It is worth noting that T.D. Jakes has been married to his wife, Sarita Jakes, for 41 years, and they share five adult children. Over the years, he's become well known in the religious community, inspiring many books, sermons, and philanthropic work. In light of protecting his reputation, Jakes' team released a statement shortly thereafter regarding the allegations and defending the pastor's honor. This is in short an expert an excerpt of their statement. Recent claims circulating on pocket, pockets of social media about Bishop T.D. Jakes are unequivocally false and baseless. Jordan A. Hora, executive director of public relations and communications for the T.D. Jakes group, T.D. Jakes Ministries and the Potter's House said by an exclusive statement to the Christian Post Thursday. Why am I having such trouble pronouncing the word unequivocally? Um, in, any, in any event, uh, T.D. Jakes has denied the claims and today in a sermon, he fired off. T.D. Jakes, he say, hey man, I'm tired of y'all. The next person say my name. In the sermon, TDJ say, the next person say my name. I'm whooping some ass. That's what he said. <laughs> nah, he ain't say that. <laughs> but he wanted to say it. Yeah, man, you gotta know. Some of people speaking on your name that much, man. You know, there's certain things, man, you know, when you uh supposed to be a man of god or you're supposed to be this upstanding person in the community or whatever certain things you really can't say i can say it i can i can i can say it and get away with it but td jakes can't say it <laughs> but imagine if he would have said it but what td jakes did say is let's it's getting serious now because this this is the man's reputation you know it is his reputation and uh he addressed it. He said, uh, some of you have come in, speaking of coming into the church, uh, out of concern. And he said, some of you have logged on for the ones who were streaming. Some of you have logged in uh, to, uh, to hear me, and I'm paraphrasing. Some of you have logged in to hear me address these allegations. To, to hear me, and he said, I will not use God's pulpit to address a lie. He told the people that they can log off. If you come here to hear me address a lie, you can log off. To which the crowd gave him a thunderous applause. He said, hey, man, you get tired of hearing all these people talking and stuff. All you got to do is log off. You just log off. Just get out. Just log out. Abort. Since these are just allegations, I think people got to be very, very careful about what they say. Now, we know what's out there, right? But I think people have to be very careful about what they say because there is no proof. Yeah, we see, we've seen stuff that looks a little funny, a little shady, uh, but we haven't really, there ain't no proof that T.D. Jakes, ain't nobody seen T.D. Jakes kissing no man, laying up with a man, uh, I'm sure that there's other straight men, that there have been straight men, I don't know if T.D. Jakes is straight or not, but I'm sure that there have been straight men that have been to puffy parties who didn't engage in none of that other stuff. I think to get to that level, you gotta graduate. I think you gotta, 
think they got levels. After you stay a little while or whatever, or you stay too long, or you walk in the room, or you drink the Kool Aid, or or you, you know, you, you do a little wiggle dance or something. It's some kind of thing that can get you to the next level. Uh, but I'm sure that there have been many, many straight men have who have been to puff parties because you know uh, a lot of his parties do involve hundreds of people, right? But you know how. You know, you got the you, know, you got the show and then you got the after party, right? And that's when it gets to be a little bit more intimate. And and that's where you know people do their thing. Now, uh contrastly, uh sometimes I might have hold an event. If I hold an event, I'll have an after party, and it's for those few people that I want to continue partying with. So only a few people are going to get that invitation. And we're going to have fun on a different level, but we ain't going to be doing none of that funny, funny stuff. Ain't going to be none of that old, you know, that same gender and poking around. And we ain't doing all that stuff there. Ain't no can nose candy, all that. We ain't doing all that, none of that. We just going to have some good old fun. It's, it's extending the party. That's it. You know who has some, some of the best after parties that really ain't a party? It's just a gathering of people just having a good time. Dave Chappelle. Every, I never miss an opportunity to hang out with Dave Chappelle after the show. It's, it's sometimes that the sometimes after the show is better than the show itself. Because Dave is one of the best storytellers in the history of storytelling. And he likes to do odd stuff, you know, like Dave will, after his show, you know, sometimes I ain't even been on stage and I'd be tired. Dave will rent a theater, he'll rent a private theater. And we'll sit there and watch a movie and Dave will have a microphone and he's, he'll be, giving a play-by-play -play of what's happening in the movie. It's the funniest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> but, you know, that's the type of cat he is, right? Um, but these parties, you know, people know what time it is, fam, and people know who to, who to try. I will say this, you resemble who you assemble. You resemble who you assemble. The people you kick it with, the people you hang out with says a lot about who you are. I'm not talking about somebody that you just at a party with, you meet in passing, y'all shake hands, y'all take a picture, whatever, whatever. I'm talking about kicking it. I'm talking about spending quality time with. I'm not talking about you went to a party and you saw somebody out or whatever, y'all took a picture, y'all chopped it up a little bit. No, no, no. I'm talking about kicking it. I'm talking about out there on that yacht with. I'm talking about chilling at the mansion with. They got keys. They got access. They've been in all the rooms. And they, y'all kick it frequently. Yeah, that says a lot about who you are. You resemble who you assemble. If you don't sell drugs and you hang out around drug dealers long enough, you're going to move one of those packages. You know why? Because if you hang out with them long enough, sooner or later, your money going to get funny and you're going to see them making that money. You're going to see that fast money coming in. You're going to see that lifestyle and you're going to get sucked in. You gonna see how they just moving out? I mean, goddamn, why y'all spending money like that? Damn, man, you got it like that, man. That's a loud car. You did what? How much? You, what you do to get that? All you did, and how long it took you to buy it? A week? Whoo, man, you bought. Wait a minute, you trying to say all you did was take some packages over here, and you was able to buy a Bentley? Man, what I gotta do? 
Or you hanging out and them killers come. When the killers come, the killers ain't going to say, hey, scoot over so I can shoot your homeboy. They're going to shoot you in here. When the police come, when they kick in the door, you might become collateral damage. You might end up getting shot or you end up, uh, they might decide that they're going to divide the dope evenly. Everybody get, everybody get 20 ounces. You know, everybody get, everybody get a brick. Everybody got a brick. It's four bricks in the house. It's four people in here. Y'all won't tell me who this stuff belongs to. Every one of y'all get a brick. That's how that go. You resemble who you assemble. Going into the comments. What's up, Ruth Robinson? Jesus loves. GG girl. Burlo, Burlo. That's right. We heard it there. For birds of a feather flock together. Lynn Marie, what's up? What's up, Lynn Marie? Was that Kendra Logan? What's up, Kendra? Never heard that name before. Can heard Kendra many times, but Kendra, I like that. Little nice little switch up. You know, mom and daddy had a little old, you know, had a little creative, had a little, what do they call it, a little artistic side. What's up, Michelle? Andrew Senior TV, TJ Clemens, Perilous Times. And here's the thing, fam, we should know that by now. We should know that you resemble who you assemble. So if a person is, hey, this guy is a certain way, this chick behaves a certain way, if Let's say, you know, let's say I'm going to talk to y'all for a moment, ladies. Ladies, let's say you are a lady. You carry yourself like a lady. You are classy. You're capable of being embarrassed. But your friend is a wild child. She off the chain. She like to fight. She ain't got no self-respect. She a hoe. But you kick it with her. You like her because she funny. You like her because she got your back. She got your back. If she out there and she got that reputation and you hanging out with her, guess what? That becomes your reputation too by default. People are going to associate you with her. And you ain't going to be able to say, well, you know, that's her. You know what I'm saying? I just do this here. You know, she do what she want to do. I, no, no, no. That might be the case. But you're still going to have people who are going to not trust you because of your affiliation. The kind of people you kicking it with. The kind of people you hang out with. Fellas, if you got a homeboy and he married and y'all hang out, you bringing him around your woman and your woman see him messing with different women, knowing he married, your woman now hates his guts because she thinks he influences you. And she don't want you around him. Now she's thinking. Whenever you're around him, well, hell, he's cheating. He's cheating on his wife. 
you might try to cheat on me. That's what she's thinking. And that makes a lot of sense. I mean, that, that's, a, that's the, the, the common conclusion that one would come to. If you hanging out with this dude, you, 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 you are co-signing this dude hanging out and he married and he having relations with other women. You hanging out with him, then you probably doing the same thing. So she don't trust when y'all are together. You might be totally innocent. But because you hanging out with this dude that's messing around with his woman, you know, messing around on his woman, your woman don't trust you. I mean, makes sense, right? I saw a video of T.D. Jakes with, with, it was a dude doing the Beyonce put a ring on a dance. And he just sashaying all around in front and T.D. Jakes is standing behind him just, <laughs> just laughing it up, just laughing it up. Couldn't be my church. Boy, y'all, man, let me think of the name of my church right quick. First church of keeping it real. I ain't going with no tabernacle, Baptist, Christian, this, that, that. Nah. The first church of keeping it real, anybody who is looking for salvation can be a member. If you're looking for salvation, you can be a member. And I'm going to give you the connect. I'm going to be the plug. I'm going to give you the plug. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be the plug, but I'm going to give you the plug. In other words, you ain't got to come to me so I can go to talk to God for you. I'm going to connect you with God. <laughs> I'm going to get out the way. <laughs> See, a lot of these pastors, that'll drive them out of business. I'm going to go ahead on and connect you with God, man. I'm going to go and give you the connect. You're going to call me and say, yeah, man, but uh, look, uh, <laughs> some of these pastors, you call these pastors, and these pastors be like, well, you know, just let me know. Uh, uh, pastor, can you pray for me and uh, talk to God? And that, that pastor, they think when the pastor pray for them that, Somehow it's a direct connect to God and, and, and the prayer going to be answered because the pastor prayed. <laughs> the pastor be like, now, you know, if you want me to pray for you, you're going to have to uh, you have to give me the deed to that house. Because I know this is a big one. I know your son just got caught. Your son got caught up in a murder case. <laughs> Trust me. Sister, you're going to need a whole lot of prayers for this one. I know you love your boy. You're going to need a whole lot of prayers for this one. So give me the deed to that house, and I'll make sure God gets your message. I'm going to be like, nah, hold on, man. So this is God right here. This is God. This is you. Uh, y'all going to do what y'all do, man. I'm out of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to make the little introduction, and then I'm gone. You know? But I'm going to come in. Say, man, dudes, up, all that plan. First of all, we ain't going to be playing no put a ring on it in my church. See, in my opinion, there has to be a difference. The church has to offer something that the streets don't offer. If, I'm, if you can do the same thing in the streets that you can do in the church, if you can behave the exact same way in the church as you can behave in the streets, what is the incentive to come to church? What is the incentive to come to church and get the word? If you're behaving the exact same way on the streets. And plus, on the streets, you ain't even got to pay tithes. So what's the incentive? There is none. So there has to be a difference. Look, man, 
Ain't going to be no, and I love Beyonce. Beyonce is family. That's baby girl. But ain't going to be no put a ring on it being played in my church. If we can't play let a hoe be a hoe, we can't play put a ring on it. That's just what it is. All right? Dude, get up there. All that sass saying, trying to sash it. Say, man, man, get your ass up out. Man, get up out of here. What the hell is you think you're doing? But T.D. Jackson off in the back in the cut like, <laughs> oh, that's foolishness, man. That's foolishness. You should never see anything remotely like that in church. You should never see something like that in church. You're like, man, if you don't get your... But see, them type of dudes, they know they only really go where they feel comfortable doing like that, doing that type of stuff. And the only way that they feel comfortable doing that type of stuff, I'm going to take, you know, I know this is going to probably offend some people. Because God say come as you are. But he ain't say stay as you are. He said come as you are. He didn't say stay as you are. If do come, them dudes only come and go, they, they go just like everybody else. They go where they feel comfortable. If somebody in the higher up, T.D. Jakes being the pastor, being the head, if he didn't make them comfortable, they wouldn't be in there in them record numbers like that. And the only way a pastor would make somebody like that who behaves that way comfortable is if they're participating in those type of activities. That's right, I said it. I said it. Because we ain't gonna have all that in Willie D Church. Uh-uh. Not at the keep it real, not at first, not at first keep it real. That's a good name. The first, the church of keep it real. The church, the first church of keep it real. That's the name. That's my church. The first church, let me write that down. Put that in the text. The first church of keep it real. Yeah, I like that. I, I'm not bishop, I'm pastor. Pastor Willie D, man. Boom. That's my church. The first church of Keep It Real. Pastor Willie D. You come here, I'm going to call a strike a strike and a ball a ball because I love all of y'all. Just like if you stabbing people in the back. Just like if you're being messy. Just like if you out shooting up the neighborhood, selling dope to people's mamas and daddies and sisters and brothers and grandpas and grandmas and aunties and aunt uncles. I'm going to call you out. If you are living against the word, if your actions are inconsistent with the word. It is my duty as the leader of this church to call you out, not to shame you, but to encourage you to do better. Ain't that what the pastor's supposed to do? Encourage you to do better. Not just say, oh, well, give me that money. Give me that money. I need to buy a new jet. I need, because that's what they're doing now. They're prosperity preaching. And if you prosperity preach, you ain't got to worry about being held accountable or holding anybody accountable for anything. And people love not being held accountable. So if they can do whatever they want to do throughout the week and come to church and pray on it and ask God for forgive, for forgiveness and 
put a little money in the offering, they think all is forgiven. And they'll go right back out and rinse and repeat and just be living some of the most foul lives known to man. You got some people that could go to church every day. They know that Bible inside out. They are, they even work in the church. They go to all of the retreats and everything. They totally involved. And they are way worse human beings than some people who ain't never set a foot in church. Because going to church don't make you no saint. Going to church don't make you righteous. Going to church don't make you a good person. A lot of people, they want to put the uniform on, but they don't want to get in the game. They just want to put the uniform on and take the picture. They don't want to get in the game. They don't want to go train. They don't want to sweat. They don't want to put the work in. They just want to. Then you got some that want to show up on at game time and they want to play. But they don't want to do all the other stuff that it takes to get in game condition. Yeah, man. First church of keeping it real. That's my church. Come one, come all. If you want the word, you want the pure, unadulterated truth. You want to hear someone who is not going to compromise his integrity, his convictions, to make somebody feel comfortable. Come to death row. <laughs> Straight up, fam. I'm like, like, man, it's, it's. I don't go to church, but when I do, or if I do, I go to a church where the pastor keeps it real. I go to the church where the pastor will say things that make you go like. When the pastor said, you'd be saying to yourself, damn, if he was, if he was on TV, he'd get canceled. If he, if he was, if he had a mega church, it would be a mass exodus. Because a lot of people who go to Mac, 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 uh, those are mega churches. Not all, I said a lot. A lot of people who go to mega churches, they some of the most foul people in society. A lot of them go to church just for the networking opportunities. A lot of them go to church to be seen. They go to church to get a position. They go to church to network. Oh, such and such go there. I'm gonna go over there because such and such go there. Oh yeah, yeah. We well, we have uh, Michael Irving and Dion Sanders attends here, and then, and we also have. Uh, Diddy comes when he's in town, he's here, and da 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 da. You know, they want to go to the church where the celebrities are, they want to go to the church where they preach the lyrics, not the word. I don't see a need if I can't get something I can't get from the streets, I can't see the need of going to church. If I can't get a different message than I hear from everybody else. Because what is the purpose if everybody's in church? If you got all these, I bet you if you took a poll right now and you go right into any of these mega churches, you took a poll. I bet you that it's about the same amount of people who are single as it is in the club, as it is for the people that don't go to church. I bet you it's about the same amount of immorality or worse if you took a poll because these pastors 
are not in the business of selling souls. I mean, they're, they're not in the business of saving souls. They're in the business of selling prosperity. They're not in the business of saving souls. They're in the business of saving face. They know the truth, but they were circumvented to get to that paper, ah, get to that paper. Tamika Hicks, what up Tamika? Darlene Lucas in the building. Mr. Mystical. Aggressive by design. Hey. Wanda Bradley. What it do? Drea says he did it. Why is a Christian pastor hanging out with rappers at parties who drink, do drugs, and have orgies? Birds of a feather. Desmond Walker joining us on Facebook. We are simulcasting Facebook and YouTube. T Gallagher, what up? What's up, Kim? Kim Taylor. Buckhorse DC in the building. I, I didn't see your name, but I see Miss Jazzy giving you a shout out. So I know you're up in here somewhere. Marcus B, what up? A man of God. Let's see. Um, let's put a picture up of uh, T.D. Jakes here. It says. That's T.D. Jakes. This is T.D. Jakes right after he heard about the allegations with him and Diddy. This is his immediate response. <laughs> ah, I'm messing with y'all, fam. <laughs> it's just a random damn picture I took off of the internet. Wow, wow, wow. TD Jakes got some explaining to do. Some people think T.D. Jakes is innocent. A lot of those same people thought that Bishop Long was innocent. Y'all remember Bishop Eddie Long? They thought Bishop Eddie Long was innocent. But I knew Bishop Eddie Long was wrong. I also knew that a pastor in Houston who got busted in a same-sex scandal back in the early 2000s. I knew what he was about because the way he carried himself and the type of people who was in that church, it wasn't like it was one or two of them. It was like it was crawling with them. I was like, oh yeah, he won. Yeah. Yeah. Again, fam, they ain't gonna go nowhere where they're uncomfortable. It was just, and I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm saying the flamboyant stuff, fam. That's what it was. I saw it, it wasn't like you had to dig for it. It was right there in your face. Right there in your face from the associate pastor to the choir director, the ushers, Typically, you know, you want to be careful about 
assassinating a person's character without having concrete evidence. The thing is, though, when you do something, when you engage in a certain behavior for so long, and it kind of tithers close to guilt, right? It's kind of like guilty by association, even without proof. It's guilt, it's guilty by association, even if somebody don't have proof. But I tell you this, fam, the Lord will humble any man playing with his name. So it's really not for us to judge. If he's guilty, he's going to have to deal with it. If he's innocent, then that'll be exposed. That'll be exposed. But it's hard to not speak on things like that because when, when it's in the news, when it hits, when it hits and it hits the way that this is hit, it's hard to not speak on it. T.D. Jake said that it will be told. Like, whatever he got to say about this, at some point, he will speak on it. But as for right now, he will not be addressing a lie. When he's this pulpit that he's standing at, God's word is about telling the truth. Now, I got an opinion just like everybody else got an opinion, fam. Everybody got an opinion about how they feel about this. I got an opinion just like everybody else. And I personally think T.D. Jakes is sus. Simple as that. I personally think, based on the stuff that I've seen, this ain't just a wild guess. This is just the things that I've seen. And I think what's done in the dark will come to light. Whatever that is, it's going to come to light. You know, you might be able to keep it on the low for 41 years. You might be able to keep it on the low for, for 41 days. But whatever's done in the dark eventually comes to light. That's why, especially in this day and time, one would be wise not to do anything that could eventually hurt them down the line. Because it's possible, whatever it is that you're doing right now in the dark, where you think that nobody knows or only one or two people know, someday the world might know. The world might discover your truth. The world might be end up becoming privy to that moment that you were in the car doing whatever you was doing with whoever you was doing it with or what you said in the privacy of your home. It might get out one day. If a person, now that ain't none of us perfect, so I'm sure anything could be recorded and repro uh, not reproduced, but distributed and you know something could be said or something could be heard that 
that could embarrass that 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 we may have said that could embarrass us at some 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 point maybe embarrass you but what you don't want to do is do something that could put you in jail <laughs> you know i could have you in a situation where you know your whole entire reputation is destroyed that's the dangers also of trying to come off as a perfect person or claiming role model status to where people expect you to be perfect. Remember when Tiger Woods won the Masters and they was talking to him, he, I think he was 25, the youngest person ever to win the Masters. And Tiger Woods said that he wanted to be a role model and da 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 As soon as he said that, bam. Now, it's nothing wrong with wanting to be a role model. But when you make a proclamation about being a role model on international television, people elevate you to a status that is impossible to keep up with because ain't none of us perfect. We all have sin and falling short of the glory of God and our parents' expectations. So you're going to do something where you're going to mess up. Something ain't going to be right. And when it happens, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. The higher up you are on that mountain, the higher that mountain, when you get the, the, the harder that fall going to be. You get to the bottom, boy, they're going to have to do about 300 surgeries to get you back, to get you back right. And you still ain't going to be fully ever recovered. That's a big drop. That's a big drop. Who is that? Diane? What's up, Diane McLaurin? It's Hartfield. Sir Patricia Woolfolk. Woolfolk. Boy, that's a cold name right there. Patricia Woolfolk. Well, if that was my, my last name, that'd be my rap name, Woolfolk. Ain't nobody named Woolfolk. That's Woolfolk. Be like, what's your name, man? What you, what you, what you gonna go by? Woolfolk. MC Wolf? Nah, man, Woolfolk. That's all I got. That's all you got to know. Big Mike Reality TV, what up? Mr. Mystical Black Rims, what up? Who is that? Uh, Tony G. Star? What's up, Tony? Clyde McGee, Chicago, Illinois, in the building. What's up, Belinda? Crystal McQueen. Rick Reed. What's up, Rick? Irvin Howard. Who's that, Jesse White? What's up, Jesse? Sick with it. See, Adrian Sterling. Tamika Hicks, Sister George, Demetria. Demetrius Russo. Mr. Suave says, Jake's a good man. Jake's a good man. Jake's got that word down. 
Jake's got Jake's is a TD Jake's is a good speaker, I think. I think he's a good, you know, he he know how to put them words in pocket, as most as most pastors do. Most preachers know how to put that word in pocket. They they're very good motivational speakers. And most of these preach preachers today, that's what they are. They're motivational speakers. Don't get me wrong, fam. I personally think is I personally think uh that uh I personally think that if you're in the business of saving souls, I think you should be rewarded. I don't believe in pastors being poor. You know, I don't believe in that. I, I don't think it's a greater calling than someone who is in the business of saving souls because Lord knows we need some of these souls out here to be saved. So I think that is a great profession to be in if you're going to do right by the people, if you're going to really walk it, if you're going to walk it like you talk it, I think you should have all the blessings bestowed upon you. Now, obviously, I think that, you know, a pastor owning a damn private plane is just too far. You know, where the hell are you going? You, you know, you we got the Internet now. You don't need to fly to Africa. You don't need to fly to, you don't need to fly from one side of town to the other side of town to go from this church to that church to preach. Some of these pastors got two churches in one city. They be jumping on helicopters, helicopters, going church to church. You don't need all that. This is the place that you come to worship. You can't get in, we're gonna put some TVs outside, just like at a tennis match at one of the, the majors. We'll put, if you can't get in, we'll, we got other buildings you can go to and you can see it on the screen. Or you can sit at home and log right in on the internet, right from home. You can watch, watch it right at the house. Or you can go out and to a building or whatever and some type of facility. And if you want to be around other like-minded individuals, you can go into that place and you can watch the service there. But these pastors, they don't need no damn private planes and yachts and all this type of stuff, but they should be able to live comfortably. And you know, what is comfortably? You're in the business of saving souls. I wouldn't be mad at a pastor if a pastor lived in a mansion, if he in the business of saving souls. You know, might have to open that mansion up to letting a few people stay there sometimes. You know, people come in from different places. You got, they got places to stay. Somebody fall on hard times, man, put them up over in this wing, you know, or, or that wing of the house, or put them in the guest house or something. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be mad about that. The problem is a lot of these pastors, man, they they worse than the people that's coming to get saved. They're just motivational speakers, good at talking that talk and getting that money. What's up, Sean Lunatic? What it do? Charles Corres. What's up, Charles? Appreciate you. CC. CC in the building. Rue. What's up? Can't love the things of the world and love God as well. How can you be rich and serve God? That's easy. That's actually easier than you think. I think it's very possible to be rich and serve God. I don't know where people get this notion from that God is just supposed to be poor. 
especially in today's time, fam, people ain't gonna listen to you if you poor. Ain't nobody gonna listen to a poor preacher. I'm talking about a dirt poor preacher. Ain't nobody, you might get, the only person gonna listen to a poor preacher is his wife and his children, that's it. You're talking about, you know, doing the right thing and people want to pay off for doing the right thing. That's just what it is. They want to pay off. They want, they want to, they want to be at peace. They want to have a, be a, they want to, the payoff need to be in a, to have a good spirit. You know, uh, if you believe in the afterlife, you believe in such a thing, you know, they want that to be heaven to be the payoff. But, you know, at the same time, you know, you got bills to pay, you know, you still got to put some food on the table. Ain't no people, ain't nobody gonna listen to a poor pastor. I'm telling you. I got you, man. I know it sounds crazy. Might not be right, might not be right to be that way, but man, if a pastor is poor, you walking up, man, imagine your pastor asking you to borrow $10. You gonna be like, man, pastor doing something wrong. Damn, man, you got the. <laughs> pastor doing something wrong. The pastor up, your pastor walk up to you and ask to borrow $10 or ask to borrow some money to pay a light bill. Imagine getting that car. Hey, brother, uh, let me get somebody out here. Uh, who is it? Let me just go with a sister. Uh, hey, uh, Cara B, sister, sister Cara B. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, it's me, it's, it's me, Pastor. Hey, listen here, uh, I hate to call you like this. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I don't normally do stuff like this, you know. Uh, but, you know, I was wondering if, uh, if you could loan me, uh, $225.13 so that I could pay my light bill. Oh, fine, uh, Pastor. I, I, I would do anything for the church, you know. Well, was baby, it's, you know, just to be uh, transparent with you, it really ain't for the church. It's for my house. Uh, it's for my... Oh, oh okay. Okay. Um, well, ho hold on, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> she, Sister Karen B is not going back to that church. Pastor Colin for his personal bills, trying to borrow some money from me, man. Hold on, man. We doing something wrong at this church, man. We doing something wrong. Pastor got to get up out of here with that. <laughs> oh, man. Who is this? Pressure on the mic TV. What up? Pressure on the mic. I like that. Appreciate you. Nobody, nobody wants to sit and listen to the word from a broke pastor. Pastor shouldn't be broke anyway. People should want because of receiving the word, they should want at the very least to take care of the pastor, make sure the pastor ain't got to go get another job. You know, there's a lot of pastors in the smaller churches who have second jobs. Well, actually it's their first job, really. The church is really, I ain't gonna say a side hustle because it ain't a hustle for those who are really, really about it, you know. And a lot of these dudes who uh, who pass that smaller churches, they they buy it for real. They do it because they love it for real. You know, they love the people for real. They want to make a change for real. They want to make a difference for real. So, you know, they do it because of that. But they can't pay their bills for what they're getting from the church because every nickel that's being collected is going to keep the doors to the church open. I 
I know if somebody is giving me, is feeding me like that, is feeding my spirit like that, and I'm getting it, and I feel like it's working, it's, it's making me a better person, I would not have a problem making sure that that person was personally compensated. Hell, I'll leave the charge. Hey, man, look, 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 we got to look out for pastor. You know what I'm saying? Pastor fell on hard times. You know, a pastor, you know, he ain't got it. But you know, you know, how many of us in here right now have the pastor actually gave a word to and it helped us better ourselves? Everybody in the room gonna raise their hand. All right. So look, we need to have a fund for the pastor. We need to, we're gonna give our tithes to the church, but we need to have a fund for the pastor. So I'm asking everybody to give what you can give so that we can make sure that the pastor bills are taken care of. At the very least, I ain't got no, see, I, see if some people got a problem with people who offer help to the community. Some people think that people, just because they are offering help to the community, they're supposed to do it for free. Well, you know, you just do it for free, just do it out the goodness of your heart. Well, you know that that person got a family too. And you know if that person is out here crusading and helping you and helping others who are in dire situations, that that takes time away from them with their family and opportunities to work, job opportunities to work to earn income to take care of their personal needs and their family. They got to be compensated. They should be compensated. I think activists are grossly underpaid. And I think a lot of these activists need to start making sure that they can pay their bills before they go out there and fighting for somebody else. They need to make, make sure that whatever they're doing, they need to figure out a way to monetize it. However they got to do it, they need to figure out a way. It's a way to do it with integrity. But they need to be, be able to monetize the work that they do because it's a lot of work. And also on top of that, when, it's, when, you, when it comes to active, a activism, activists are often targeted by dangerous people. They're targeted by politicians. They're targeted by people in the streets because an activist has to go against the grain most of the time. They have to go against the machine. They have to go against the man. And the man has resources. The machine has resources. They have to go against the cops a lot. So they're exposed to a great extent. And they can, and many activists actually have been murdered. But they've covered it up to make it look like a, a regular old uh street dispute or something or they try to make it look like they killed themselves or something but activists get killed all the time they should be well compensated because they are putting their life on the line martin luther king and malcolm x should have been living like kings they paid the ultimate sacrifice it should be no reason why malcolm x with all of the sacrifices that he made, should have had issues with paying his mortgage and making sure the babies was, and, and, and the wife had what they needed. And he had what he needed. They should have been living damn good. I ain't got no problem with people who doing work getting paid. I have zero problem with people who do the work getting paid. It's the people who don't do the work. That's who I got a problem with. I got a problem with cops who get paid for doing nothing and actually or get paid to actually make the community worse, who get paid to terrorize the community. I got a problem with them type of cops. I have no problem with a cop who stands on something and say, no, not on my watch. I'm going to do right by the people. I'm going to be able to look myself in the face. I'm going to be able to go 
to my house and look at my babies and tell my babies who think that I am a hero because I wear that badge and that gun and that uniform that I'm something special. I'm going to be able to look in their eyes and know that I am something special and I am needed. I have no problem with those type of cops getting paid well. It's the ones out here who are actually committing crimes. They're bigger criminals than the people that they they uh, swore to bring to justice. Yeah, those are the ones I got a problem with. I have no problem with teachers being well compensated. It's the ones who don't do nothing. And so, in fact, if they do something, they are doing things to hurt the students. But yet, they get to keep their job because the union is so strong that the, 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 the school district can't get rid of them. Yeah, I got a problem with that. Disco Angel, Humpty Preacher. What's what you saying? Preacher said on the wall, Humpty. Da, 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 do, 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 do. Nandy Johnston, what's up? M. Penny, what it do? What's up, Nikki B? Memphis in the building. Marlon Brown, peace, brother. Johnny C. Johnny C. Brandy Nuance. The one Richards. Oh man, you hit the nail on the head. The one said most churches are social clubs. God dog. God dog it. Damn, the one. Well, you put that one in the pocket, man. Didn't touch nothing. You put that boy right in the pocket. Didn't kiss another ball. Didn't touch the lip of the pocket. You hit that thing right in the, down the middle. Most churches are social clubs. Social clubs and fashion shows, huh? Paul McBride, what it do? YG asks, do you go to church? Hey man, I got a, I got a deal with church. I got an agreement. I don't go to church and church don't come to me. Renee Obando, what's up? Geo Franklin, what's up? Haters are trolls. Jay, what's up, Jay? Jamaica in the building, Royal Gale. Jamaica. I'm gonna have to find my way to Jamaica. I heard some good things about Jamaica. I gotta go there, for, if for nothing else, I gotta go there for the food. I gotta go, cause I like Jamaican food. So I gotta go there 
and, that, and they say that this ain't even the authentic stuff. I think it's, I got a, I got a homeboy who owns a restaurant out in Houston called Yamins. Yamins. It is spelled N Y A M M I N G S. You have two locations, Richmond and Houston, uh, like uh, West Houston. I'm talking about, and he's from Jamaica. Good food, talking about good food. Oh man, I'm talking about good, good food. Man, shit, it's Sunday, but I might, I might have to. Ooh wee. I try to stay away from uh, that red meat. I try to uh, limit my red meat intake, but damn, boy, them oxtails, lamb chops. You got an oxtail and lamb chop meal. <sighs> Talking about delicious, man. <sighs> Just the right amount of spices, because you know sometimes Jamaican food can be too spicy, way too spicy. You got to, you got, to, you know, but not that one. Man, I might have to call him and make sure he's uh he's up there and he got some good stuff in there already. Cause I'm telling you, fam, I might have to go there today. Give me some. But yeah, but they say that in Jamaica, it's all good. So I gotta go check that out. I gotta go check that out. And you know, and see the people. Like I want, I need to see the people, see the people of Jamaica. And to see them, meet them, greet them. Y'all remember when we used to go to church? I don't know if they still do this, but when I used to go to church, the way the pastor gets you, this is how they get your money. They'll be preaching and they'll, they'll start saying something like this. I ain't gonna be too much longer. I know some of y'all got your beans in the pot and you're looking at your watch. Got those smothered pork chops in that pan and got your rice on the side. Some of y'all like to eat yams with the extra butter. And you ain't no people, well, you ain't no people love to eat. They know we love to eat, so start talking about food with me. Yeah. <laughs> Meantime, they passing out the uh, collection plate. <laughs> they passing the collection plate around. Yeah, I won't be too much longer. Now, y'all, come on. Let's, let's finish out the collection plate. Give what you can give. Whatever you can't give today. Um, Go ahead and write an IOU to the church and we'll collect your payment next week. If you don't have cash, there's an ATM machine just outside the door. We here at the Dollar Church, we want you to make it to heaven. The only way to make it to heaven is to put money in that collection plate. Some of you didn't give last week. That's why you ain't got no food on the stove right now. That is why you're weary. Trying to figure out whose house you're going to go eat at. I know Sister Johnson don't have to worry about that. Sister Penny 69 don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Sister Penny 69 don't have to worry about that. Miss Jazzy 
don't have to worry about that. Because Miss Jazzy have paid her tithes. And so God blessed her with some collard greens. I know she liked to cook collard greens. Last time I went to her house, she made collard greens and she had that turkey inside of it. And let me tell you something, if you ain't never tasted Sister Jazzy's turkey with collard greens, you don't know what you're missing. And they just be giving that money. All you gotta do is talk about food. They be ah, laughing. <laughs> But that's the crazy. He take care of you. <laughs> Ooh, man. Pastor be tripping me out, man. <laughs> Pastors be tripping me out. You know, every, every church got a Sister Johnson. Every church got a Sister Johnson. Every church got a Sister Johnson and a Sister Jackson and a Sister Williams. Sister Jackson, Sister Johnson, Sister Williams. In every church, <laughs> it's almost a prerequisite. Hey, now, you want to open a church? You say you want to open a church? Okay, now, you know, in order to open this church, you got to have a minimum of at least one Sister Jackson, Sister Johnson, and Sister Williams. Pastor be like, yeah, 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 I got you, I got you. Uh, damn, who can I call? Uh, damn, Sister Williams, man. If I call her, she gonna want some. I mean, I'd I take one for the team. Fuck it. <laughs> Sister Williams. Hey, 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 yeah, this pastor. <sighs> Some red boxes. Let you see. Okay, I'm gonna send you a picture. Now, you wanna you wanna face you want me to FaceTime? All right. <laughs> oh man oh man why these pastors something else man <laughs> it's like yeah uh need to join brent come on over to the church switch your membership over yeah i got a new i got a new church got a new church opening up got a new church opening up yeah we're gonna open up yeah hey um you know you got any friends uh, last name, uh, Jackson, uh, Johnson. Yeah. Hey, bring them, bring them to the church. You think they'll, you, I can get them to sign up for a membership? Yeah, well, I just needed for like, I just needed to get in the door. I just needed to come in and sign up, say she a member and that's it. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got to come, they ain't, they ain't got to, they ain't got to come to church. You know what I'm saying? I just need them to sign up as a member. And they're going to have to leave their social security because they're going to check to make sure. All right. Cool. <laughs> oh, man. It's crazy. This is crazy. Got to do all this to open a church these days. 
my papa opened his, opened his church. When my papa opened his church, he just opened the church doors and, and it was cool. Tyra Gartner, what's up? What's up, Sandra? Sandra Wideman. Tuck Man, what's up? All right, fam, I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, if you're just not joining, uh, we're having a conversation here about T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes and his comments about the explosive allegations linking him to Sean Diddy Combs and what he categorized, categorized as false and baseless. So T.D. Jakes responded to the damaging allegations involving himself and Diddy, where he's been accused of engaging in same gender relationships and allegedly participating in inappropriate sexual conduct with a minor. T.D. Jakes in a sermon today said, hey man, some of you have come in uh, logged on logged in to you know out of concern some of you have logged in to hear what i'm going to say and in a nutshell he said i am not going to entertain this foolishness i'm not going to spend my time at this pulpit entertaining or addressing a lie but there will come a time. So let's see, said the blind man. Let's see. Family, I appreciate y'all joining the live. Enjoy your holidays. Merry Christmas if you celebrate such a thing. Until next time, family. No more talk.